All right, now that we have completed our modifications to our VS transmitter and we have selected our HD VS transmitter to be the, the exciter for the transmitter, we're now entering into the AUI and we'll complete our configurations. Very first step that we want to go in is we want to go into menu and we want to go into our presets. Selecting the preset that we want. In this case, we're going to set the power all the way down to minimum power, 8 watts, in this case for the VS300 that we're using. And then the mode will not change at this moment. This HDPA volts will be changed. What we use is table 2 that's provided in our IS or FM, depending on the model of transmitter that you have. Using the calculation, in this case, since we will be operating in FM plus HD mode, and we will be operating within minus 20 dBc, there will be a certain calculation that we enter. In this case, it's 0.485 times our frequency, and then we add 0.668. In this case, we'll use the HDPA volts of 45 volts. Once this has been completed and we've entered that value, what we will do now is we'll go ahead and proceed to go RF on. What we want to make sure is that it ramps up and it's stabilized at this level at minimum level power. While it's stabilizing, we'll go to our menu and follow our next procedure. We want to go to our iBox settings and hardware configuration. And then you want to select this button, Calibrate. So automatically calibrate. And as you notice below, the calibration value will automatically change. So this is going to allow the transmitter to be able to operate within its proper levels. And then we can usually allow it to run about five minutes more to be able to ensure that everything's warmed up. And once that's done, we'll hit Calibrate once more and make sure that we have the correct number. Once we've done that, we'll go RF off and notice that it's relatively stable. We'll go into our menu again. We'll go once again into hardware configuration, and this time we'll go into our XGen interface. This is where we'll configure our XGen to make sure that all the information will reach it. Our digital carriers and protocols will be selected, customized by the client, as well as the XGen exporter, NetMask, and gateway. Our E2, uh, E2X port is by default set to 9000. However, this is configurable as well, depending on what your network administrator states. Once that's all set, go ahead and hit set, and it should be all configured and be able to ping or respond to the XGen. Once we've done that, we will continue on to our preset. And since we've already made sure that it's stabilized, now we'll enter into the mode that we want to operate on. The injection level as well, this is where you'll select the injection level that you want. Your LUT index should always be none flat in this case. As mentioned here, and of course we've already calculated our HDPA volts. All right, so once we've done this, we'll go ahead and continue on. We'll go RF on. Now we'll be operating in the proper mode that we wish to require, and then we'll continue on to hardware configuration, and once back to iBox settings. In this level, we'll allow it to stabilize slightly, and then what we'll do is we'll select the auto fine gain. And what we should see, since I've set to minus 20, which is relatively low injection gain, this number should change. These numbers should remain the same. So we'll go ahead. Say it's relatively changed. In this case, as you see, number changed very little, but it did change. That's the new configuration for it. All right. So once we've done that and we've allowed it to continue on and stabilize, what we're going to do now is we're going to RF off. And now we're going to set it up to the power that we require, our TPO in other words. So we'll go back into our preset. In this case, our TPO will be 100 watts. We'll apply that, and then we'll go RF on, and proceed with the same process as before. Go back into our iBox settings, and once it stabilizes into the correct level, we'll enter into the auto fine gain. Always ensure that you allow the transmitter to stabilize and to ramp up, that it ramps up correctly and that it's allowed to warm up a little bit. Once this is done, we'll go auto fine gain. 
a number in this case changes again, and that's the level of injection that we'll have for our gain. Once we've set that up, what we want to make sure is that the transmitter is operating correctly. So we'll go into our system review, into our layout, and we want to make sure that our average PA dissipation does not exceed 180 watts. In this case, we're at a good level, we're at 150 watts, so there should be no problems, no issues. As well, we want to make sure that our spectrum is nice. We'll change the spectrum in this case to be able to display the correct levels. Depending on our audio, I have to go back to our mode there, my apologies. And once we allow it to stabilize, once again, we'll just hit that, and it's changed automatically. So we make sure that our carriers and our sidebands are correct, are within the allotted levels. They're not exceeded. They're just barely, and they're doing well. If we want, we can modify it a little bit later, following the procedure and repeating it once more. With all that information having been done, completed and verified, we want to return to the hardware configuration. Now we're going to store our new LUTs. We'll name it. Usually what we'll name the convention is the mode that we're operating in, our TPO, our level of injection, and then a frequency. We'll select it, enter it, and then save new. And then we want to make sure that we remember the number, because that way when we go back into our preset, we'll be able to select it by its number. Once that's done and you verified everything is operating correctly, our process is complete. Simply repeat for any other presets that you want to set up. Thank you. And that concludes our VSHD setup. My name is Ricardo from Nautil Customer Support. Thank you once again.